Does the density and solute concentration of a solution affect the index of refraction of light? This experiment will be measuring the angle of incidence and the angle of refraction from a laser pointer. Snell's law will then be used to determine what the refractive index of the solution is. This test will be repeated using various concentrations of a salt water and a sugar water solution to see if the density and the solute concentration of the solution actually affects the index of refraction. For this experiment, you will need numerous equipment which is being displayed on screen right now. My apparatus for this experiment resembles a wooden retort stand and it closes around the container on one side and holds it in place but on the other side it is exposed so that the observer can mark the points of the laser light. The laser light is mounted on a combination square that is connected to the vertical piece of the wood. The apparatus is sturdy and due to the fact that it is made out of wood it is inflexible and will not vary from test to test. I chose to use a laser sight from a gun as my laser pointer as it is highly penetrative and bright and is extremely focused and this will definitely help when taking measurements for the experiment. I am also using a backup laser pointer just in case the other fails and this one is a wide sweeping ray that is connected to the wood and is angled magnetically. a metal right angle that was held in line with the light points horizontally, I mark the points where the light enters the water and where it touches the bottom of the container, and then mark them across the container vertically. As you can see, I have two vertical lines. The first line is marked at a point where the laser enters the water, and the second point is where the laser touches the bottom of the container. Using parallel lines, a line can be marked across creating a triangle. And initially, I decided on using a protractor to measure the angle, but this was too inaccurate due to the size of the felt pen. To make the experiment more accurate, I decided to use trigonometry by measuring the opposite and adjacent sides of the angle. Here are the results for a test of plain water. I was testing for this experiment with salt and sugar and I poured them in accordingly to their respective weights. I had four original tests of each solute ranging from 5 kilos to 20 kilos with variances of 5 kilos. For each test I mixed the solutes until they dissolved. After this performing of the experiment I then repeated the entire experiment to get a fairer average and therefore more accurate results. This is the result of the test where 5 kilos of sugar is used. As you can see, theta is equal to 22 degrees and 21 minutes. And this is a lesser angle than the pure water test. This is because the opposite side of theta has decreased whilst the adjacent side of theta has increased, giving a smaller angle. This means that there is a smaller angle of refraction but however, this means that there is a larger index of refraction as a light is bent more within the medium and it is slowed down. In the test using 10 kilos of sugar, theta became 21 degrees and 1 minute. The opposite value of theta still continued to decrease and the adjacent value of theta still increased meaning that the angle would continue to decrease and therefore the index of refraction will increase. In the 15 kilo test of sugar, theta became 19 degrees and 47 minutes. There is a trend that is occurring in that the more solute you add to the solution, the more the degree is lowered. And therefore, this means that there is a higher index of refraction as a light becomes continuously more bent in every single test.
This is the results using trigonometry from the 20 kilo test of sugar. The values have changed dramatically compared to the original test, and the opposite side has decreased to 112 millimeters, and the adjacent height has increased to 332 millimeters. Theta is equal to 18 degrees and 39 minutes, which means that it is uh, lessened even more. This means that there is a trend in decreasing amount of angles through the amount of solute that you add. This shows an increasing index of refraction as the light is bent more and this has been constant throughout the entire experiment. It was at a point that the solution started to become saturated, so it is unclear if a 25 kilo test could have been performed, but there was enough data to recognize a trend and to make a conclusion. This here is a demonstration of Snell's law and how to use it. As you can see, it is used to find the angle of refraction. But however, I have to rearrange this experiment to solve N2, which is the medium's refraction of light. Here is my working for a zero kilogram test of sugar, being pure water. I use Snell's law but rearrange it from the image that I just showed you to solve for pure water's index of refraction, which is equivalent to 1.378, but in real life, it is equal to 1.33. This table and graph list all of the indexes of refraction for every single test throughout the experiment. The index of refraction rose exponentially with the second test, which was the initial adding of the solute, and then it consistently rose, but with sugar bending the light more than what the salt did. Thank you for watching this video. This experiment was highly intriguing and I learnt a lot. I enjoyed this SRP and look forward to learning more in science.